So typical fall behavior. I get a lot of questions this time of year with people's tortoises sleeping outside, people not seeing their tortoise for a couple of days. All of this is normal. Tortoises do whatever they want to do and they spend a majority of their time where they feel most comfortable. So typical fall behavior, once it starts to cool down, your tortoise will be spending more time out, or as it's nice, you know, when it's 80 to 90 degrees, when you want to be outside, your tortoise wants to be outside too. So once we see the initial cool down from our 100 degree days, we see a lot more tortoise activity. Now once it starts cooling down even more is when your tortoise will start spending more and more time inside of its burrow. They kind of do whatever they want. <laughs> so slowing down as the weather cools, some tortoises will eat less and sleep more. Some tortoises will eat right up until brumation. I know a lot of spoiled tortoises that get fed every day and they're used to that so i know a lot of you guys are out there spoiling your tortoise so it's not uncommon for them to eat all the way up into brumation it's also really not uncommon for them to not eat for weeks before they go into brumation that's part of their normal habits so when where and how long will my tortoise brumate for so when your tortoise will decide when it's time so you want to supply the nice area for them to brumate in. And as I mentioned, the outside temperatures will be cooling. We'll see the shorter length of the day and their internal clock determines when they're going to brumate. So every individual tortoise is different. And often we see when people record the last day that they see their tortoise and the first day they see their tortoise in the spring, it usually is around the same time for that specific tortoise. We have some early rise, or we have some that go to bed early, we have some that go to bed late. Last fall, our fall was a lot warmer, and I had some tortoises stay up to the end of November, which was not crazy. I've already had a couple of people calling me that are concerned that they haven't seen their tortoise and they may have entered brumation earlier. Not something that I would be too concerned about. Where should my tortoise brumate. So I'm sure all of you are familiar with the outdoor burrow design that we supply for our tortoises, whether it's underground or above ground, but you do want to have a well insulated outside burrow. If that's not available, then there are some other options. Um, it's not an ideal method, but if, like I said, an outside burrow is not available, then what you can do is our box in box brumation method where you would brumate them in a shed or a garage. We do have Walter here with us today too. Walter's being adopted out tomorrow and is very social and very excited to be going to his forever home. <laughs> <laughs> How long will my tortoise brumate for? So as we know, they pretty much go down around mid-October mid to mid-November, and then they appear in the springtime. Now, just like we discussed when they'll go down, it's pretty much the exact opposite for when they wake up. So once the temperatures start warming up and it's about, it stays above 60 degrees inside their burrow is when they'll start becoming active again. Basically anything below 55 degrees inside their burrow is what keeps them inactive and it's important for them to have that brumation period. Um, so typically we see them appear up in March and April, sometimes as late as May. I know this past year we had to dig up one of our tortoises come May just because we were a little concerned that she was sleeping in. She was fine. <laughs> um, so again, just warmer temperatures, longer days in the springtime, and again, the internal clock is a factor in when your tortoise is going to emerge from brumation. Some, some helpful brumation tips. What can you do before your tortoise goes into brumation? What's very important is to make sure that you're checking for clinical signs of illness. So you wanna make sure that there's no discharge coming from your tortoise's nares, their nose or their eyes no bubbles coming from there, no, um, their eyes aren't swollen or sunken or red. You wanna make sure that it's looking healthy before you put it into brumation. If your tortoise is showing any clinical signs of illness, you wanna make sure that you're taking it to the vet right before brumation. And we often actually recommend doing an annual checkup 
about a month before brumation. So typically sometime in September, if you haven't yet, then I would probably take your tortoise for an annual checkup just to make sure it's looking good before it enters brumation. Um, we recommend typically doing it in September just so that if it does need to be treated for an upper respiratory infection or anything, then it can go through antibiotics before and it won't have to be kept up out of brumation. Um, another thing that we typically will do is giving our tortoises a nice soak. So when you're soaking your tortoise, typically we use just a bin like this. Um, Rubbermaids work. I know some people will do in their bathtub, whatever you have available. Um, you'll fill that tub up about halfway up the tortoise's shell. So you want to be just about here on his shell and make sure that he's available to stick his head above the water, but can also submerge his head under the water if he so chooses. This will make them basically force them to hydrate um, they can take in water through their nose, their mouth, their skin, and even their cloaca. So their cloaca is the vent underneath. Um, they actually absorb water through there as well. So it's nice to give them a nice soak and get them nice and hydrated before they enter brumation. So, <laughs> yeah, can you adopt one? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> You've never soaked one? They have a dish out in the backyard. Yep, so it's good. it's good to have the dish as well. We like to promote soaking just because it pretty much forces them to. Some tortoises really don't prefer to soak, so if you just put them in a water dish, they'll just walk right out. Um, so that's why we would put them in like a Rubbermaid bin or something like that. Um, so typically about 20 to 30 minutes. Some of them tend to get a little restless, and that's when I would probably take them out. But I'd leave them in there for about 15 minutes with tepid water. You want to make sure that you're not shocking them with really cold water. So nice, lukewarm water. So, so any, um, depending on the size of your tortoise, if you have a smaller, you're just going to put shallower water. So you want them to be able to lift their head above the water. Um, but you also want them to be able to sit in it. So pretty much right, right about there on the shell, regardless of what size tortoise you have. The bigger guys, sometimes a little bit deeper. This is Walter. <laughs> so during brumation, we have a lot of people that get very worried because it gets really cold sometimes. We see a couple days where we see freezing temperatures not to be alarmed because typically inside your well-insulated burrow, it's about 10 to 20 degrees difference in outside temperature. So when it's 35 degrees outside, it's probably closer to 45 to maybe even 50 inside your burrow, which is perfect temperature for a tortoise to be in brumation. Some helpful tips when it is really windy and it gets super, super cold, some folks will crinkle up paper and stick it in the entrance of their burrow so that it reduces the air circulation. It also allows the tortoise to exit the burrow if it so chooses. You don't want to be blocking your tortoise or trapping it inside of its burrow. Some people will use Timothy hay. Another um, factor in that is if it does rain, you want to make sure that you're taking that out. You don't want to be leaving something that can start to mold or anything like that. You want to make sure you're changing it out if it does rain. Also, if it rains, you may get to see your tortoise, which is really exciting for the people that get to see their tortoises in the winter because I know a lot of us miss them. So it's very exciting. Nothing to be alarmed about. It's part of their natural instincts to be able to sense oncoming rain. If we think about it, they're very well adapted to the desert and it's part of what helps them to survive the desert. In the wild, that may be the only opportunity they have to get a drink of water. So they'll come out and they'll sit and wait for the rain. Same thing happens in the wintertime. If they sense it's going to come and rain, they're going to come out of their burrow and they may sit and wait. Now, if it rains and you don't see your tortoise, also nothing to be concerned about. <laughs> they're just sleeping through it. And they know that you'll provide them with water. Sometimes they are acclimated to that. Um, but yeah, that pretty much covers that. Another thing that some people will do is um, stick Q-tips or little sticks at the entrance of the burrow. 
So if their tortoise does come out in the springtime or even during the winter, they'll be able to tell because it'll knock down those Q-tips or the sticks and they'll know that their tortoise was out of the burrow. So that's kind of a fun thing to do as well. Um, obviously, if it rains, you want to be checking inside the burrow to make sure that your um, burrow's not flooding. And if it is flooded, then you'll have to dig it up right away. So just extra precautions to check for when we see some crazy weather conditions.